Hey everybody, it is Sunday afternoon and the rain has finally stopped. It's been cloudy and sprinkling rain off and on all day long and we finally got a little bit of pretty weather so I wanted to get out here and try to do a little bit of a yard tour. Uh, as I've said before, this time of year everything changes pretty fast so I like to try to do at least one a week uh, just to stay on top of all of the growth and everything. Uh, so today we got a little bit of company. Bootsy's out here with us. Although he's probably not going to follow us around too much. But we can definitely give him a little hello. He's a big boy. So, if we start looking into details, because now it's almost getting time to start looking for details. We've got so many different plants starting to come in. Uh, right here we've got some new Cosmos. Uh, we've got some little 4 o'clocks that are starting to come up. Of course, all of the flocks here are getting ready to start doing stuff. We've got the rutabecchia. Uh, you can see the peonies are going. So this is more of the uh, black-eyed Susan or rutabecchia. We have got one of our beautiful black iris blooming right there. That's an absolutely stunning iris. I absolutely love it. And somewhere down here I saw something. Oh, uh, right there, one of the cosmos is starting to bloom. This stone crop, I don't have any of this in my waterfall tank, but... I do have a little uh, experimental box I'm doing stuff with in the basement. I'm trying to grow underneath of a 2700K LED, and I've got this stone crop under that. And it's not actually flowering at the moment, but the flowers are developing. So we are getting there. Uh, we've got columbine uh, blooming, and we actually tried to get some columbine today. I suppose we can move on from this garden. That gives you a pretty much good look at what's in here, most of it anyway. Um, Tiger lilies, we've got butterfly bush, and then of course more of the cone flowers or echinacea coming up in here. We've got a lot of flocks coming up over here. Uh, these are more flocks, more tiger lilies, of course hosta everywhere. Uh, if we come over here, we had to wind up getting mixed variety packs of columbine, so we don't even know what they're actually going to look like. Uh, we used to have beautiful columbine years and years ago and slowly but surely it's all sort of gone away and the only ones we have now is four or five different varieties of like blue and purple so we're trying to get some reds and yellows and really you know mix the colors up again as far as the garden up there goes you can kind of tell if you follow along with my videos i mentioned before how i'm kind of just going to sort of let everything start spreading back down the hill so i don't have so much to worry about mowing you can kind of see the track where I came through and mowed, but I left all this alone. And so that almost looks like it's part of the garden already. But the line of the garden is all the way up here where the rocks are. I know you can't even see it. Uh, but these big hostas are like right on the edge. And so all this is just from seeds falling down the hill and starting to grow. So we're just going to let that keep happening. And then this hill that again i know it doesn't come across on video how much of a hill this is but it's really pain in the butt to try to mow sideways across it so hopefully in a few more years i won't have to do that anymore oh down here let's see what we got going on my wife did get some of her planters set up this one is still a work in progress it's only got one plant in it and i would imagine this one's probably going to get at least one more thing added to it uh, I know it looks a bit sparse now, but remember, a lot of that stuff's going to grow in and fill in. Uh, this Creeping Jenny here is going to come out and flow all down the front of it. Uh, that's going to look beautiful in another few weeks. That's just hosta that's been dug up. We're going to transfer that to the driveway. Uh, this is some columbine we were able to find at a different garden center, and it's close. It's definitely different than what we've got, and it's pretty, but it's not exactly what we were looking for. Uh, we've got that sort of reddish one, and then this is the one I really like. It's really subtle, but it's so pretty. So we're going to hopefully allow this one to be able to go to seed, and we'll be able to spread these around quite a bit. The other ones are already past their prime, and they've already cut the seed heads off, so we're just going to plant them and have them grow back. 
We've got peonies over here in full bloom. Uh, these are awesome peonies too. I love these. They're huge and you should smell them. They're amazing. A little bouquet of them will stink up the whole house. Uh, we've got those and then we've got these sort of yellow, creamy, white ones back here. And then we've got all this dianthus in bloom right now. If I get my shadow out of the way. So that's looking good. Uh, I've got all of my work stuff laid out because my kayak's in the back of my truck right now. So this is that money plant I was talking about in the last video. This was all covered in purple flower. And now it is covered in its coins. And there's our other guest visitor, Squeaker. Meow, see you down there. You gonna show everybody how cute you are? You gonna roll around and get all dirty? Rub up against me? So that's a money plant. That's why they call it a money plant. These will eventually turn into sort of a papery like material that'll turn sort of a golden color and it'll get clearish like a translucent and you'll be able to see all those little dots in there uh, through it and then of course those are the seeds and will spread very easily uh, haven't got any flowers on any of our daylilies yet uh, the wife came in and dug a lot of the stuff up that was getting too thick down here and sort of spread it out a little so we should have <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we should have more uh, going on down this end here pretty soon. And then, of course, our hydrangea back there will uh, start blooming pretty soon. I got distracted because we bought a new hydrangea. Uh, we planted some celosia down here, but it's not really doing all that good. Um, two of the four look like they're still alive, these two. This one's dying, and then the one down here is already gone and dead. So I'm not really sure what went on with that. Our clematis... It's got flower heads all over it, little flower buds all over it. And nothing really special about this one, just kind of a pale blue, sort of a roadside wild clematis, but it's pretty enough in its own right. Uh, this is our pretty clematis over here. It's got these real sort of spidery flowers on it, and they're a deep purple with those white pistils sticking out in all kind of different directions. It's a really, really pretty clematis and we tried to thin some of the hostas out over here you can see they're getting pretty thick and overgrown uh, some of these should be separated out and you know again the day lilies and all that kind of stuff we've got a few flag lilies that are starting to bloom uh, this is actually my dog's grave dog had him for 18 years so that's a flag lily I had these in my waterfall tank at one point, but I wound up after the flowering cycle was over, I wound up removing them. Uh, I have seen these growing wild out at Pretty Boy though, when I was out on my kayak the other day, so that's kind of exciting. And we've got more of them up here, we can go get a better look at them. Uh, don't think we need to go down the driveway, we'll probably end the tour by coming up the driveway in fact. Uh, kind of excited about this one. This is a fuchsia. We've never had a fuchsia before, but they're really, really interesting looking flowers on that. Really stunning flowers on it. And I just don't know how well it's going to do in our part shade area. We've got it over here, which, uh, as you can tell, this is the sunny part of our yard. Uh, it really is. It gets, mo you know, for our yard, this is the area that gets the most sun. Uh, it's just getting kind of late in the day and the sun's already, you know, it's in the trees over there. So that's it. It sets over that away. So this is it. Our, you know, the last little bit of our sun's going to fade on up the hill and be gone. That's it for the day. It's only 6 o'clock in the evening. So, as I say all the time, we just don't get a lot of sun here. But that's why we have so many hostas and still bees and so on and so forth. So these are more of those flag lilies. They are kind of past in their prime, but they're still really pretty uh, and interesting looking flower. I always thought they were some sort of iris, but they are not, apparently. Oh, let's see. We've got a bunch of tiger lilies doing their things. Of course, hosta. We have some more of those flag lilies here. I'm assuming this is the same thing, except these are much taller. And you can see the flower heads are on them, but we don't have any actual flowers yet. Here's uh, some of the new shoots of bamboo are coming in. I really need to 
break these off before they get out any bigger out in the yard. You can see that one's already shot up. And then of course, all this stuff back there, that's all last year's bamboo. So this is the edge of my fern garden, but I haven't really maintained it as a garden in years. In fact, right here is supposed to be the trail uh, that leads you in there. You go in between these two trees, and I used to have a path back there. Actually, there's several paths that wander back through there. There's a bench back there. I used to have a fire pit. Um, so there's hostas planted back there. We actually have a bunch of flowering uh, plants in the early spring we get going on back there. But just over the years, it's just so much to take care of out here that, you know, this one's just kind of fallen to the wayside. And now it basically is just a huge patch of fern. When we moved out here, the fern was already there, but all it was just briars. All this was briars. And I cleared all that out and turned it into a fern garden. And then eventually it has sort of gone back to, you know, being whatever it's going to be because I really don't go back in there and, and do anything to it anymore. See, you can even see the briars are starting to come back after all these years. So this is the top side looking down. I'm not sure what we're really going to do with this area in the long run. Right now we've just sort of used it to fill in a bunch of uh, hosta just to kind of fill in the space. Look, you think he'd think we're looking at him. Well, we are, but he doesn't know that. Over there rolling around looking adorable. So we filled in the space with a lot of hostas, but I don't know if we're going to do anything else beyond that. Uh, I just cut down these uh, honeysuckle bushes last year. These were huge. They were just, they were giant canopies of shade and darkness they were like giant umbrellas that covered this whole area this whole top side of our yard was just dense shade all day long and now that we've got it opened up i'm not really sure what we're going to do with it we do have a lot of japanese painted fern uh we've got some ghost fern around here somewhere i'm not sure where our ghost fern's gotten off to um uh, looks like the wife was up here clearing out a bunch of stuff the other day and I can see where it got to So let's be careful on all this because that is poison ivy that's been pulled out. I don't want to get that on my ankles uh, This area I used to go and mow all the way back to the tree line uh, all this bamboo up here This whole area I used to drive my lawn tractor um, back in there and dump my mulch and stuff my my chopped up grass and everything but little by little the bamboo kept getting taller and taller and harder and harder to get through and this path eventually is no longer a path i used to be able to again drive my tractor back through here but i mean you can see that in that corner that was my mulch pile and look we got new shoots coming up here so you would think we were in the tropics somewhere with all this bamboo or wherever bamboo grows does it grow in the tropics no it grows in the mountains in china what am i thinking <laughs> so anyway that's our little no longer area back there that's already been encroached upon and then so this area i'm kind of letting do the same thing not with bamboo though but with hosta and i kind of use this as a nursery we dig these up and I sell them, I've mentioned before, and I've even sold them to some viewers. Uh, if you're interested in any of the plants you see, let me know, because I usually have a million babies coming up everywhere. So if you like hostas, uh, I can ship you some easy enough. Um, a bunch of this stuff is pretty much easy to just stick in a bag and ship. So if you see any of this kind of stuff you like, I'll put my email down below, uh, and you can hit me up with it, and we'll make whatever arrangements. Um... I don't know what to talk about up here again lots of hosta that's a theme if you haven't picked up on that yet a lot of this stuff is going to be varying colors of bee balm which smells amazing even the plant itself uh well it's a balm so it's got that you know the aromatic oils in it and just bruising the plant itself you know smells amazing and then of course once the flowers are on it the flowers are going to be really exciting i can't wait to see them Lots of fern. That stuff grows like a weed, so we're going to have to get in there probably and thin some of that fern out. 
Our Wajilia, or whatever this is called, is way past its prime. It's down to its last few flowers. But they are pretty flowers. No arguing about that. Uh, believe it or not, that Japanese maple right there is probably 15 years old now. Well, we've had it for 15 years. I don't know how old it was when we bought it from the guy we bought it from. It was at least several years old then already. So um, it's a you know minimum of a 15 year old maple. It's just not a very fast growing maple apparently, but I'm really happy with it. It was a $15 roadside purchase, well made. All right, so let's move on to this side of the yard a little bit. I'm kind of bummed out. The last time I did a video, I completely forgot back here on this fence, we have a wild clematis growing that is just beautiful. I say wild clematis, so we never planted it. It just showed up there one day, but it's got a beautiful white flower on it. And now you can kind of see, you know, what's left of it, but it's, it's way done past its prime. Yeah, there's, that's about the best you're gonna see what it used to look like. So that's kind of a bummer that I missed that. I guess that's a little better example. Um, no point really in going up into the top side of the yard. That actually was a, sort of a pet cemetery. I've got quite a few uh, cats up there. And now the bamboo is sort of growing into that and gobbling that area up. And likewise with this corner, I actually came out when I mowed yesterday, you can see these pieces of bamboo, there's a runner that goes under the ground all the way out to here. So if I stopped cutting it, actually it goes all the way out to there. So if I stop cutting it and stop worrying about it, all this area is going to have all of that bamboo back there growing out and into it. So you can see some of these new shoots coming up, you know, all the way out here already. So I kind of suspected when I planted that bamboo years ago, I was going to regret it one day. So we've lived out here for 19 years now, and I'm thinking I might be regretting the bamboo. <laughs> it makes for a really nice privacy screen. You can't really even see the neighbor's house back there anymore, even in the dead of winter. Um, over this way, you don't see too much, but I don't have much bamboo planted on that side of the yard. So different sort of privacy screen going on over that way so this is what we call the forbidden garden we call it that because years ago this tree fell over and got wedged against that tree and we have never been able to afford to get somebody to come in here and take it out and for a while I was really worried that it was going to just break and fall and I didn't want my wife working over here in the garden so we sort of jokingly called it the forbidden garden and as time went on and we began to realize like that tree's not going anywhere and I guess someday it's going to fall but right now uh, we're not too worried about it but it is definitely something we need to get taken care of one of these days so with this garden this is probably our favorite garden. Lots of hostas, lots of astilbe. Uh, this is our uh, chocolate astilbe we got this year, or last year. I guess last year, it just came back this year. Um, really like this one, that's a coral bell, that's a coral bell. Stillbe, of course we got hosta, we got more stillbees over there. Um, this is some new stuff we've got. Oh, I can't even remember what this is. This is toad lily. So this is going to have a really awesome looking flower on that. And we just got an oak leaf hydrangea. I'll show you where we're going to plant that in a minute. Yeah. I see you. You come over and say hi again. So I'll show you where we're going to plant that oak leaf hydrangea in a minute. Uh, but you can see if you start really paying close attention, you'll notice we've got little bits of... Uh, ghost fern and painted fern tucked everywhere here and there. Uh, this is maiden's hair fern. Uh, these are um, actually some of these are goat's beard. They look very much like a really tall, um, like a wild astilbe almost, but they're not. Uh, very similar looking plant though. And I think a couple of these are ghost, uh, goat's beard and I think a couple are astilbe. I'm honestly not sure how, I've never really bothered to figure out exactly how you tell which is which. Uh, but if you look closely, you'll also notice that a lot of these ferns are all different species so we've got all kinds of different ferns it's not just the roadside variety over in this garden again lots of a still be 
still be just getting ready to go. You can see the flower heads on all of them, but no flowers as of yet. So if we come down this way, we've got a little path that goes up there. You can see that a still bee is getting ready to go pretty soon. That's a little tiny dwarf of still bee right there, I think. Got one tucked back in there. More hostas, of course. Uh, I love it when the cats come over here when we're out here in the garden. Um, they treat these like tunnels and caverns and caves and, you know, we'll be walking along and they'll come popping out uh, under our feet out of nowhere. So the cats really enjoy coming over here too. All right, what do we got going on here? This little area here is actually where a lot of our um, micro hostas are. Uh, first of all, if you'll again, if you notice, you got a still bee, you got Japanese painted fern, you got more still bee. Stuff is tucked in all over the place here and there. Another little still bee right here. But this is one of our micro ferns. I mean, hostas. I'll keep calling them micro ferns. Micro hostas. Another hosta. This is another hosta. Here comes the cat. It's going to make his way through the bushes. Come here. You going to go around a long way? Make a liar on me? Nope. He's just going to stop over there and make a complete liar of me. So i got to be careful where I'm stepping here. Again, you can see this is not a micro hosta. This is just a young hosta. This is a micro hosta. This is a micro hosta. Now, this is mouse ears. I know that. Uh, we have so many of them. I'm not sure what's what anymore, though. Come on, get out of there. Come on, watch out. More different types of ferns. So I can get lost over here. We can spend lots and lots of time looking at what's going on over here. And of course the cat can spend lots of time eating stuff. Uh, this is an autumn fern. Really like that. That's doing well. And we got another autumn fern. I was going to say it's somewhere around here. I'm practically standing on it. This one's doing fantastic. That one looks awesome. And we're even getting it at the right time of day. Got more uh, Japanese painted fern. Lots of astilbees through here. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And then this is sort of the bottom end of the garden area. And right over here is where we're going to put that oak leaf hydrangea. And that will kind of just fill in that area. Uh, if you'll notice, you see all of this stuff. This is the dead nettles that I've got growing in the um, basement. Uh, that's a native plant around here. This is Virginia creeper. This is another native plant. I know that looks a lot like poison ivy. Uh, it is a climbing vine, and it gets absolutely stunning in the autumn. It's like red and yellow. It looks like it's on fire. And if it's on, you know, if it's growing up trees and everything, it's just it's really really stunning plant. Uh, that is a native plant around here. Well, it's named Virginia creeper, so that's definitely this part of the world, even though we're in Maryland. All right, done with that part of the yard. Let's come over to this part. Oh, let's see. I don't know whether that's from a buzzard. Probably from a buzzard, but possibly from a hawk. I'm guessing a buzzard. We have a lot of them around here. There's a few more potted plants that just haven't made their way into whatever location they're going to make it into. These are my wife's projects, as I've mentioned before. She's uh, got a much better eye at matching up colors and textures and whatnot than I do. Potting bench is almost done for the summer. And this tree got cut down uh, last year, so we've got a planter on it now. But it's also hollowed out, so I think next year we're just going to throw some soil in there and actually start planting directly inside of it. And here's more of this stuff. This uh, stone crop, is you can use that for ground cover. You can use it for anything. You just spread it around. It grows everywhere. I've got that stuff all over the place. Um, well, let's go down this way. There's nothing really to look at on the front porch. Uh, there is one planter right there my wife likes to do that one every year with petunias in it for some reason it's almost tradition uh, even though we don't do a whole lot out on the front porch but we can finish up by we're being followed 
you stay here. He's not paying attention to me. Um, we'll finish up by coming down through my little secret path here that I made. It's Sunday, so there's no mail to check. But this is like a shortcut down to my mailbox. And then we can walk back up the driveway. And we'll finish up the tour at the top of the driveway. We'll call that the whole trip around the yard. And I do have stone pavers laid down out here, steps to step on. So this is the columbine I was talking about that I've got down here. I really like this columbine too because it's got this real honeycomb appearance to it. It's really neat looking stuff. Uh, that's more of a typical columbine. has that sort of honeycomb, but this sort of double honeycomb on these is really, really neat. So we've got them. We've got more of those double honeycomb ones there. We've got these, which are slightly different. I really like those too. Uh, some pink ones, pink and white. These are kind of pretty. Actually, I ought to dig some of these up and take them up into the yard. And then we've got these. I mean, these almost look like Floribunda. And those are definitely those honeycomb looking ones so this is a fantastic one i'm definitely gonna have to dig this one up and uh, bring that up so that's definitely columbine too um there it is again and so on and so forth and that's the neighbor's mailbox that's for uh, these people across the street there so that's my view across the street and this is the view up the driveway there's my little secret path we just came down so the left side of the driveway is pretty much covered at least for the lower half of it over here there's not a lot going on just basically kind of no man's land we're letting the as much root in as possible but we do have hostas and daylilies and we've got rose of sharon uh, and that's Rose, R-O-S-E, not R-O-W-S. <laughs> uh, Rose of Sharon in a row, all the way up the side of the driveway. We've got them over here. Uh, we have Rose of Sharon, which is a type of hibiscus everywhere. Um, so by June, we're going to start seeing the flowering really taking uh, full effect. I know that just looks like a lot of uh, trees and everything, but that's going to be a lot of flowers here pretty soon. So we have all that. As a border, we've got the hosta, we've got the daylilies, but what we're trying to do is fill in this area. Uh, I used to have to mow all the way over to where these trees are, and slowly but surely we're letting this get done, so I don't have to mow any of that stuff anymore. So as we get further up, you can see these bigger uh, cinnamon fern that we're planting. You see all these weeds that I can't mow because we're starting to put stuff in here. Uh, all of these are little baby Rose of Sharon, if anybody wants Rose of Sharon, let me know. I've got 10 million of them. Um, sensitive fern. And then these are all the hostas that my wife has been sort of plugging into the driveway to kind of fill in that whole uh, area. And there's my kayak. I should be out on that right now instead of doing this video. Um, what was I going to do? I was going to show you some... Rose of Sharon. You see all these little round double leaves? Every one of those is a baby Rose of Sharon coming up. And that's just the baby babies. If I wanted to go around and find, you know, seedlings and saplings and two inches tall and ten inches tall. Um, again, all these trees here, these are all Rose of Sharon. And we've just got them everywhere. So, again, check my email down below. Hit me up. Uh, if you're interested in any kind of plants and if there's anything I can do to help you out with them, we can work something out. So we're going to wrap it up. Call that the end of this video. We're kind of back to where we started. So thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, don't forget this is my yard tour playlist. I do these as often as I can when the weather's nice. So thanks for watching this one. I'll see you real soon in the next one.